This is Twit. First, let's uh, go out to California and talk to Howard. Howard, it's really good to have you. W eight W six H N. Yes, great, and you got the right call. Thank you very much, Bob, and good evening to you and and the other guests and and all the viewers. Are, it's viewers. It's great to be here, and uh, really excited about RigPi. And and so once you want me to to launch into the uh, description and and the story, let me know. Yes, well, we have a whole bunch of questions about it, but uh, basically, I'm sure you're going to cover most of them and the fact that. Uh, how you uh, thought to do it and how you developed it and all of that. So uh, let's do that. And then you can uh, call up the uh, uh, the shots that uh, Victor has in the studio. So I'm anxious to hear how, how you did it and why you did it and all that. Yes, it's, it's been uh, it's been an odyssey. I originally got involved with with servers over a decade ago to uh, host a, a couple of servers that I have for my other Windows product uh, or program, logging program, Comcat and Comcat Mobile for iOS. But those servers really got me inspired to think about uh, the, the architecture of servers and how that really is well suited to uh, station control. Uh, servers allow you to connect or have a number of connections uh, to, to one computer, to share resources, uh, to use any number of browsers, uh, even to do control things over, over servers. And it turns out that uh, RigPi uh, was was born out of that that idea. It's a multi-user, uh, multi-radio uh, server, complete with a web browser interface and uh, all of the uh, other uh, aspects of logging and rig control that you might hope for. I can see you've put up the MFJ one two three four site, and uh, you can see that the uh, uh, price is $299.95, and you only need one of them. Get a lot of questions about how many we need. You only need one at the station end. Uh, it connects to your radio either through an internal audio board and uh, or through a codec, if your radio has a codec built in. It also has an internal uh, MFJ, I'm sorry, uh, K1EL uh, wind keyer chip. And uh, that is on a second board. Then the Raspberry Pi is the uh, fundamental computer inside of the box. So it's a complete server. It uh, lets you operate your station uh, either locally or remotely. And it uh, includes digital modes. It has the latest versions of FT8, WSJTX, and GS8 call. So why don't we jump into the uh, slideshow that we've done and, and uh, take a look at it. Rig, Rig Pi Station server, server, sometimes we call it the RSS, uh, is um, uh, Raspberry Pi based, as I said, and and was born out of the um, my thoughts about using a server for rig control. Uh, the MyQSX.net was launched in 2009, but why not set up station control using a browser? That would have many advantages. In other words, the uh, complete control is done through a, a web browser. So that means that it's agnostic to an app. You don't need to download any software on the remote end. You can use Droid, iPhone, uh, PCs, Apples, Linux boxes, even Chromebooks. Uh, complete uh, Linux computer is on the Raspberry Pi. It's a three and a half by two and a quarter inch board. It has extensive I.O. Uh, there are many, many ham applications available for it, probably hundreds. It, it's inexpensive. It's available for about $35. And uh, it is uh, also being superseded, as we speak, by a new Raspberry Pi 4. And uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 is going to be uh, introduced into RigPi at some point in the future. The goals were to provide rig and rotor control. Uh, logging, callbook lookup. It contains an FCC online database. I'm sorry, uh, built in to RigPi, not, not online. You don't need to connect to it through another server. Um, it also allows you to connect to any one of a number of popular uh, DX spot uh, sources and uh, has a wants to have a built in keyer, the goal, and uh, audio through VoIP. Um, and uh, it, it is set up to be multi-user, which means you can connect it with multiple devices at the same time, or you can have friends 
using uh, sharing your radio, or you can have uh, friends using their own radio in your shack uh, for complete independent operating. The uh, two boards, as I mentioned, are the RigPi Kier. It's an add-on board. You can choose to add it or not to RigPi when you purchase it. It uses the very popular K1EL WinKier chip. And uh, if you buy the complete box from MFJ, the full up 29995 system, then it's uh, uh, all set for CW with a, a CW board built in. And the second board, which is on the next slide, or the RigPi and the RigPi audio board. It uh, appears as a standard audio device to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it uses port audio and it's compatible with uh, all popular VoIP programs and, and digital modes. There is transformer isolation built in. It has an IQ input, two channel input if you wanna build up a pan adapter. And it's uh, got a number of PTT options that allow you to either control your radio's PTT function, or you can use it for external switching. You can repurpose the PTT connection. With RigPi remote, or operating in the remote mode, you can control your station from anywhere you have a, an internet connection. You can use just about any device as long as it has a browser. And it uh, also happens to be compatible with my program Comcat for Windows and Comcat Mobile, which is a free iOS app on the Apple Store. It can be battery operated for field operation. Think about go go bags, and it's uh, also uh, you don't need an internet to uh, to uh, use it. It is completely self-contained, so you can use it for mountain topping and and other uh, remote applications or uses where you don't have internet. The RigPi network uh, can be set up with multiple remote users. It uses the Mumble uh, VoIP and texting application. You can have multiple users connected to that. You can uh, connect it to a repeater, and uh, there are some software apps that you can load on RigPi that will allow you to control repeaters. You can link to other RigPi nodes and uh, even set up a wide area RigPi network. Uh, using uh, other software that's available for free from many, many sources. The applications are almost infinite. We've uh, added to this list since uh, it was originally written, but uh, certainly you can use it with locals for local station control and logging and call lookup. It's great for remote or mobile radio control. You can use your phone in your car and use your rig at home. It's a, an excellent choice for field day. It uh, allows uh, multiple users, multiple radios, and each user can maintain their own log and the logs can be combined into one for further processing. It's great in a go box. You know, it's, uh, you can put a small radio and a, uh, and a rig pie and a go box and you've got a lightweight, low power solution for rig control and, and uh, uh, battery operation and uh, operation in the fields. Go, be also good for de-expeditions. You don't need to carry along a big uh, laptop or other uh, large computers. You could use the RigPi uh, as the main station computer. And finally, it's great for emergency communications when you need something that's perhaps battery operated and uh, where you need to control it remotely. Uh, it's a, a perfect uh, application for that. There, uh, as I've been saying, you can communicate when there's no power, internet, or cell phone. Uh, you could use it for last mile message delivery. If the uh, use it uh, radio for uh, something like Wind Windlink and uh, put that software on the rig pie and away you go. It's great for texting and two-way audio between users. So even if you're not using it for radio, uh, if you're in an emergency situation, you could set up a, a network uh, with an antenna up high, uh, a, um, a Wi-Fi network, and allow users from as far as a mile away to log in and, and have two-way audio with uh, one or more users. Uh, there are also a number of gateways to outside services using radio. That's one application that we'd like to add in the future. Here's a, a photo of the box. It's very small. It uh, uh, looks like a typical MFJ box. You can see it has the HDMI input and 5-volt power supply input and a speed key. You don't need to be running the uh, RigPi uh, system in order to use the keyer. So there's a pot on the side of the box to control the keyer and uh, control the speed. 
Uh, on the right side, you can uh, see that there are the standard uh, RigPi connections. Here's a, another excellent uh, photograph. There we go. Thank you. You added some. That's great. Ethernet connector and uh, USB, four USB ports. The audio connector is um, an RJ45 that uses the standard uh, cables produced by MFJ for their 1204 uh, audio, uh, 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 audio, the, uh, audio converter box for digital modes. And then on the back, there really isn't anything other than cooling. On the far side, there is uh, four, six connectors uh, that you can use in lieu of the RJ45. There's an IQ in for um, pan adapters. There's a, a receive in and transmit out with the PTT on the transmit out. Uh, there's a separate PTT connector for uh, the keyer paddle input. You can use a paddle or a keyer or a uh, straight key as an input and the key output to the radio. So that takes us pretty much through all of the features. We've covered a lot, but uh, what do you think, uh, uh, Bob? How does that look? First of all, all the things that you say it will do, and of course we know that it will do, you would think it would be a box, a huge box, and it would be $5,000, but uh, that's not the, the case. I, I'm, I'm just in awe of, number one, what it all will do in that little box, but it's it's not expensive. So uh, you have a real winner here, and I know that Martin Jew and the whole team at MFJ are going to be the ones to put this thing on top. I understand that they're way back ordered on it already. So uh, go ahead and get on the list, everybody, because uh, this is going to be something very special. And I, I really appreciate all of the information, Howard. Uh, Gordon, are you still with us? Are you there, Gordo? Oh, I sure am. And wow, I'm drooling over what Howard brought to us uh, tonight. Yeah, that's going to be great for all the things that you do out there. What about you, George? You, uh, I think you, you and uh, Howard have hooked up before, haven't you? Oh yeah, Howard and I talked. Uh, well, I guess it was a couple of years ago at the MFJ 45th anniversary, and he was just—I don't know—you you weren't real far along on the project back then, and I'm glad to see that you were able to release it this year. And boy, it looks like it's taken the world by storm. That's really good stuff. Howard, yes, we, need I, I, get, we need to get... Go ahead. Go ahead, Howard. Yeah, I was just going to say we need to wrap up. I think that's what you may be saying. But I should also mention uh, you can learn more at rigpi.net. We also have a very active forum at rigpi.groups.io. And you're absolutely right. It is backordered now. And the response has just been absolutely amazing. 